let's have a conversation about characters from the creation to the character development. These are the results of my self-education. Hello there, my name is Tanya Stephenson and I am a self-published author. This is my writing realm, where I am working hard to improve my skills as a writer and a self-published author, and sharing with you what I learn along the way. Now here's a couple of notes before we get started. This is an unedited recording and slideshow presentation, so please forgive any errors you hear me come up with along the way. Secondly, comments are encouraged, as I hope this sparks some great conversation below. Please also click on the thumbs up if you enjoy this presentation. Where did I get all of this information from? Well, uh, previous local writing group meetings, listening to audiobooks, research on the internet, watching other author tubers, and honestly, personal experience. Character creation. All right. A character always starts, obviously, with an idea or from the beginning of a new story. We can use pre-made sheets or templates. We can organize thoughts and plans in software like Scrivener or Word, or maybe even Excel. We can use handwritten notes, which are kept in a notebook or a binder. Some people even like to use recipe cards. Others prefer sticky notes on a wall or board. Leave a comment if you have any other ideas as to how you start your initial character creation. Here is what my plan is. My plan is to design a character creation template in MS Word, Microsoft Word, which can be used for all of my future characters. So here is the details of the character creation template that I'm looking at. Section one, the appearance. The appearance to me is pretty obvious. The sex, the age, the race or species, the hair color and length, eye color, markings or scars, height, weight, clothing, other important physical attributes. Maybe they've got a scar or wear certain colors on their clothing. But one tip is this section, what helps some people, is to find or draw an image that represents what they're the character looks like and add it to this section of the character creation template. All right, section two is the background of the character. What I mean is their birthplace, the details about their parents, siblings, their family life, any special skills or talents or life experiences that have shaped who they are today. Section three is going to be like a personality deep dive. So I'm talking about how do they interact with people? What's their personality like? Are they an introvert? Are they an extrovert? What are their hobbies or interests? What are their flaws? What makes them relatable to the reader? What do they value? What do they hate? And of course, what are their fears? All of this can drive how they respond to different situations in the plot. Here's some of the important stuff. What does the character want? This drives the plot forward. This is the what they call external. This is what the readers actually see happening out, out in the open. What does the character need? This drives the character's growth, the internal character growth and who they are. What happens when I just don't know? Here's some ideas of how I can resolve this. Number one, well, here's the thing, I'm a pantser. I'm going to explore each of these characters while I write and add on to the existing character template for that specific character. 
I'm going to put myself in that character's shoes and try to fill in the blanks or whatever information I just can't think of automatically. Number three, I can also go somewhere that resembles their environment. Now that might be hard to do in some stories. For example, mine's a high fantasy world, so I can't really go into a magical forest that has blue roses. But maybe, maybe I can find somewhere nearby that has like an area that reminds me of one part of the story. Maybe it'll take me into that character's perspective better. <clears throat> Excuse me, sorry. Number four, I could explore pictures of places on the internet imagining they are standing there in front of me in that place saying well what would they say what would they say if that character was staring at me look standing in that place that i'm looking at in the picture what would you do leave a comment below and let the rest of us know so one thing that I did not put into this presentation, as I'm realizing now, as I'm recording the end of this presentation, I'm going to take each one of these character templates that I create on Word, and as I fill it in for each character, I'm going to print it out, and I'm going to create a character binder. Now, character binders come in handy, and I've talked to a few other writing friends that I have in the local community here, and one of them says, you know, one writer sorts it alphabetically by the person's or the character's name. Another might sort it by the world or maybe the order of appearance or maybe by which book they appear in. I'm not entirely sure, but I feel like I want to have dividers and have one divider per story and then have the characters in alphabetical order so that when I want to find a, a character's name, I can go into that first to the story and then find the character's name easily. So if you have at one of these character books or binders, how is yours organized? Or do you have any ideas as to how you would organize your book? So if you have any other thoughts, please feel free to comment. I really would like to open up a wide um, conversation. All opinions are welcome. If you don't do anything for character creation, that's okay too. The purpose of this today is for a stepping stone where maybe it will offer you some information that you didn't think of before or another, you know, tool. I don't know. I kind of feel like a tool sitting here staring at my thank you screen. So I'm going to let you go. So have a great rest of your day, afternoon, evening, night, or whatever, and we'll talk to you soon.